Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today will be the first video for me on this channel to talk about AMD Ryzen 7000 aka Zen 4. Typically I don't really do content prior to launch simply because I don't want to have like unconfirmed content or speculation on here. But thanks to MSI for leaking this very interesting CPU installation video which also featured cooler installation. And we already did that I think for Alder Lake launch with some leaked images where we were digitally measuring some stuff of the CPUs. And that's what we will also do in today's video because I figured out that some parts about Zen 4 could definitely be very interesting. We will start with this screenshot I took out of the video. And first of all, we will draw a simple line in this image. And just looking at the position of this line, this line has a length of 776 pixels, which equals 40 millimeters. So dividing this by 40, then you can calculate how many pixels is one millimeter and so on. And this way we can take measurements within the image, always taking the perspective into account. So if we want to measure like in a deeper area of the image, we always have to re-measure the length again. That's something that took a bit of time, but that's something you can easily do with like perspective correction in GIMP takes a few minutes, but then uh, it's pretty easy to measure within the image. And first of all, I was investigating the heat spatter and heat spatter size, because if you just subjectively look at the CPU, like the first impression you get is that it's, it looks like a massive CPU, but you have to keep in mind that it's exactly the same dimension as with Zen 3, at least when you talk about the PCB size. So it's the same 40 times 40 millimeter. But then Zen 3, like a 5950X, has a dimension of 37.5 times 37.5 millimeters on the IHS. Now, if we investigate the main contact surface of the Zen 4 CPU, it only has about 28 times 28 millimeters. That means we are comparing about 910 square millimeters of surface for Zen 4 versus about 1300 square millimeters on Zen 3. That means that Zen 4 has a reduction of about 30% contact surface for your cooler versus an older AMD CPU. And there was already an interview with Robert Hallock on, I think it was Tech Power Up, where he was discussing the IHS size. And he said that the reason why you have those cutouts on the side of the IHS is because they, have, they had to move some of the capacitors or more of the capacitors on the top side of the PCB. Now you would think about, I mean, there are no capacitors on the back side of a Zen 3 CPU, right? But I think he was referring to the capacitors which are sitting inside the socket of Zen 3. Whereas with Zen 4, because it's LGA, there is no more space in the center of the socket because the entire surface is just packed with pads. That's why there are no SMD capacitors in the socket of Zen 5 or AM5, which means they had to move some of the caps on the top part of the PCB. That's probably why they had to make those pretty weird looking uh, cutouts on the IHS. I also want to point out that the digital measurement is actually quite accurate because I did some reference or like uh, comparisons while taking images of CPUs I have here physically and then I did comparisons and I was always in the range of like three to 4%. It was never like 10%. So maybe worst case, if we talk about the surface of like the contact surface of the Zen 4 CPU, where we said it's 28 times 28 millimeter, I mean, worst case, it's like 29 times 29, but it's not going to be 30 times 30. And talking about the IHS, immediately when I saw the Zen 4 CPU for the first time, at least some images online, I straight got the impression that the IHS is a bit thicker than previously. And when I did the measurements again, and those measurements were a bit more tricky because we had to take the angle of where the photograph was taken into account. But again, as I said before, you can easily do that with the perspective correction using GIMP. And then I was measuring a thickness of the IHS on the side of 3.6 millimeters. I also want to highlight that we cannot look inside the CPU right now, which means that some of the CPUs, they have like a cutout in the center or something, something milled or whatever. So we don't know if the internal has the same thickness. But from what I saw in the images from the MSI video, like the way they handle the CPU, you can from some angles look uh, to the side of the CPU and it seems like the IHS has the same thickness everywhere. 
And 3.6 millimeter thickness is actually quite a lot. So for example, if you compare it to 12900K, it has about 2.5 to 2.6 millimeter thickness in the center. Same goes for like a 10850K. Or for example, if we take the 5950X, it also has about 2.6 millimeters or 2.5 millimeters. That would mean that the IHS thickness in the center increased by about around 1.1 millimeter. And there could be probably two different explanations for this. First of all, because they moved from PGA to LGA and LGA is a bit more compact, means that they had to correct the total height, the C height of the CPU. Because AMD wanted to keep the compatibility for the coolers the same from AM5 and AM4, which means that they have to have the same C height of the CPU, like the distance between the top part of the IHS and your mainboard. This had to be identical to AM4. And because AM4 was using the PGA socket, which typically takes up a bit more space, then it means they probably needed a correction of the height with the IHS. And the second reason could be due to the hotspot of the CPU because this shifted slightly. And to check that out, we will now check out some images of the PCB and also dies, also do die size comparison. But before we get to that, we will take a look at a second screenshot which I took from the MSI video. And from this perspective, I found it rather interesting that the side of the CPU seems to be open, which is also something new, at least looking at like all the previous CPUs and desktop CPUs, most of them were always glued all the way around the IHS. Sometimes they left a gap for like, I don't know, thermal expansion or something like that. But for this like octopus style IHS, seemed like they only glued the arms of the IHS while they kept the rest open. Quite interesting. Not sure why it's the case, probably manufacturing related of the IHS, but it will definitely make liquid metal application a bit more challenging. The images we're going to look at now were taken from official AMD presentations. What I also found quite interesting is that after cutting them out from the slide, I noticed that both CPUs, Zen 3 and Zen 4, had exactly the same dimensions. Both had 500 times 500 pixels. I don't think that's coincidence. So they probably, or quite sure, just used actual um, CAD drawings. Again, we know that the PCB size of the CPU is 40 times 40 millimeters. So we have our reference again, but on let's say the 5950X, we know anyway what kind of like chip or die size we have. So for example, top right CCD would have 10.5 times 7.7 .7 millimeter, while the IO die has 9.3 times 13.2 millimeter. And now if we switch over to the Zen 4 CPU, it has a slightly smaller CCD. It has 10.5 again in length, but only 6.7 millimeter in width. Looking at the IO die, only very, very tiny change in size. Again, 9.3 millimeter in width and length changed from 13.2 to 12.7 millimeter. And after calculating the die size itself, we went from about 80 to 70 square millimeters on the CCD, which is a decrease of about 13%. And on the IO die, it's only a very tiny decrease from 122.7 to 118.1, which is a decrease of about 4%. Apart from the decrease in die size, I also noticed that the position of the dies themselves also changed slightly. You can notice that by just overlapping both images and play around with the transparency of both images, and then you will notice that, that on Zen 4, the dice were moved slightly towards the corner, and at the same time, also the IO die changed a bit to the center. Then I did a quick drawing of what I had on both images. It's just a little bit easier to visualize, and there you can clearly see that the Zen 4 CCDs were moved a bit towards the corner by about 1.6 millimeters, and the IO die about 2 millimeters towards the center. If you think back to Zen 3, let's say 5950X, we had the case that if you had a modified mounting, let's say with an AIO, and you slightly moved the AIO downwards, because the hotspot on the 5950X was not in the center, you had a benefit in temperatures. Not much, maybe five, six, seven degrees Celsius. And now you could think, because on the Zen 4 CPU, the dice were moved more towards the corner, which means that this could potentially lead to a worse hotspot. But then you have to keep in mind before you start some weird speculation that again, at the same time, we also have an increased IHS size. And even though this is just one millimeter, that can be a lot. That certainly will help 
to transfer the heat on the IHS and transfer the heat on the CPU. So I'm not sure if it would make any sense to start some speculation about like hotspot problems because it's definitely too early. Nobody tested the CPUs independently. That's why I would ask, like, because I know that often medias pick up videos like this, like don't start any like hotspot discussions and stuff before anybody tested this. It doesn't make sense in my eyes. But yeah, it could definitely be something interesting to test. At the same time, as a summary, what I find interesting is the fact that the cooler contact surface is about 30% less compared to Zen 3. We have a smaller die, about 13%. That shouldn't be a significant factor, but it will definitely help the yield rate. Apart from that, just some interesting findings and thoughts I had on the upcoming Ryzen 7000 CPUs. So thank you for tuning in. Till next time. Bye-bye.